Caddis Maximus here, this time with a relatively short review of this Calterm Basic Battery Automotive Battery and Alternator Tester. This thing's really annoying. Calterm is part of the group that also is Gardner Bender and Sperry. They make a variety of electrical test products. Calterm, versus, as their name implies, uh, is fairly well known for a variety of zip ties and terminal products, crimp on terminals, and they used to be you know, relatively okay, but they've been really cheapified. This product is particularly offensive. I actually found this at a thrift store for two bucks, and uh, I thought, God, that looks awfully familiar. That looks just like the $4 unit at Harbor Freight. So I went searching this part number. This is a current product, or at least they're still selling it, for $12 to $13. Triple the price for the exact same unit the Harbor Freight has for four dollars. I'm not a proponent of Harbor Freight, but Calterm charging twelve dollars for this is 100% unadulterated price gouging, and it's really frustrating. And it really knocked down my already not great opinion of Calterm to basically zero. I don't think I'll be buying any of their products when they are just selling stuff like this essentially ripping people off. That's what they're doing. They're ripping people off for a product that costs a dollar to make, Harbor Freight House for four, and once again, they're trying to <laughs> sell for 12 bucks. These things are super simple. It's just a couple little cables, six LEDs, and a series of resistors in there. So as the voltage goes up, it allows each LED to light. So when you're at a really low voltage, say five volts, it only goes to red, 12 volts, yellow, 12.5. And then when you start your car, the alternator starts generating energy. Normally that would be 13.8 volts would be considered an optimal voltage to be coming off of your alternator. And so when you start your car and the voltage jumps up, if it's at 13, it says it's low, 13 and a half to 14, it says it's normal. And then if it's too high, 14 or above, it gives you a high output. I even have a little uh, power supply here. I'll demonstrate what that looks like. Let me turn off the light here so you can see this better. Here we go. So, oddly enough, let me get a little bit more focus. So the red light turns on at, oh, you can barely see it there, two point, whoop, I just lost my little connector here. There we go. Come on now. 2.4 volts. Get that focus there. We're going to go all the way up to 5 volts. Seems to be good. We'll see when the 12 volts turns on. Twelve volts is at full brightness at 11.6. So it's a little bit low. You can see the crossover of the resistors and the voltage that it takes to drive LEDs. These things aren't specific. They need a transistor control to actually make the lights just go straight up on and off. It says it is good at 12.5 and this is what's hilarious is we get quite a bit of the green light at exactly 12 volts which is where it says that it's only at mid charge so that's not super great we're at 12.3 so it's already a little optimistic we can see the 13 volt one starting to light up light up now we're actually at 13 volts 13.4 and this is what's confusing is because if I go to exactly 13.5, there we go, we're still getting uh, the red light, the over light, starting to turn on. And at 13.8, which is considered the optimum voltage or a proper voltage coming off your alternator, this thing's going to falsely tell you, oh, it's reading too high. Anyway, that's the frustrating portion of this tool is the fact that it's not particularly accurate. And... You can just get a multimeter and then see what the voltage says. And if it says that you're over 14 volts, then you know you're over 14 volts. This thing's going to, you could have an alternator that's just perfect at 13.8, but you'll be getting a red light thinking, oh, my alternator's bad, and maybe go buy another alternator. So that's the other frustration with this tool. Then they had the genius idea of uh, <laughs> putting some sheet magnet on the back of it, but it's about the weakest sheet magnet I've ever seen. I mean, this is... it barely even holds on this would never hold on to any portion of an engine bay or anything like that and let's see what's up. let's see if there's any screws behind this let me get a tool for some reason there's some actually pretty strong adhesive on this thing not exactly sure why they would use probably to try to prevent you from going inside and seeing that there's only 
50 cents worth of uh, parts inside this thing. It's ridiculous. I gotta really scrape that off. Well, the glue that they're using on this is insane. Almost like they didn't want people to go inside and see what a cheesy product this really is. I did get access to one of the screws. If there's another one, we'll just break it off. Oh, is it glued? I think this thing is glued together and screwed. Unbelievable trying to take this thing apart, but uh, we'll see if this pair of channel locks will help me out here. There we go. Now there's only one screw, they just glued it together. Surprisingly enough, there is a little chip in here, but it's just so terribly tuned, it <laughs> didn't work. Here's all of the, the resistor stack. They have a diode for reverse polarity, so if you plug it in backwards, it doesn't burn itself up. Well, after looking up this uh, particular chip right here, it appears that it's some type of LED driver that's really more there to help protect the LEDs themselves from getting burned out in certain situations, like from voltage spikes, that type of stuff. Not exactly, because you can design this with just simply the resistors. They do attempt to use five-band blue uh, precision resistors, so it's more accurate. But as I showed, just the whole nature of the device is inherently inaccurate because it doesn't uh, have enough electronics to actually cut off to where it, you know, if this light will not turn on unless the voltage is above 14, which is how this needs to work. Unfortunately, as I showed, even at 13.7 volts, this red light lights up. So anyway... Probably way too long of a video for this little Calturn tool, but I was just so offended when I saw this and, and then looked online and saw that they were trying to get $12 for a, basically a, <laughs> once again, an item that's $4 of Harbor Freight that you can use a coupon on and get for like 3 bucks. It's just really pretty offensive. It's just ripping people off. Don't buy it. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching. And subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.